Okay, we're on. Okay, well, welcome everyone to the Gamelier, um, and a very special Gamelier. We're really happy tonight to have a Simon Bachelier here from Games for Change Europe. Um, just a few words about the Gamelier before we start. So it's a game club based here at the Cree in, 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 uh, in downtown Paris, and we have a bunch of different events that we do. We do things like inviting speakers, but we also do play tests and game jams, and we're starting up a new game lab where we're going to have game developers and scientists uh, doing residencies there, so we can kind of come up with new scientific and educational game. Uh, and without further ado, I'll leave you with uh, Simon. OK. Thank you, Jesse. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, so thank you all for, for coming and, uh, and be, be with us uh, this evening. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about things related to Games for Change Europe, social impact game. What does that mean to make meaningful games? And also the natures of the gathering we will kick off tonight. Because the idea is to have monthly meetings with people uh, in order to talk about uh, meaningful games, uh, finding inspiration as game developer to produce uh, video games that can have an impact. IRL, I mean, in real life or stuff like that. Uh, and um, so the, the presentation today will be divided in three parts. Firstly, uh, we're going we're gonna to introduce what Games for Change is. Then I will take a few examples of what can be or what has been made uh, in the um, meaningful game or social impact games area. So we can have some examples. Maybe some of you already know them. And um, the third part will be what will be planned for the next gathering, what we will do, what we will see, talk, etc., etc. So uh, to, to start, um, we have uh, Katharina Tillman. She is co-president of Games for Change Europe. She came from Cologne today to, uh, to attend the meeting. And uh, I would like her to, to join me <laughs> in order to introduce, uh, to introduce her, because she has a very particular background and uh, it's you? yes you have <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it would be nice to yeah, introduce yourself and also talk about Game for Change Europe the initiative when it happens and what are the plan on what we are current, currently working on thanks first of all thank you um, yeah for organizing all of this year it's really great and it fits perfectly in what we are trying to do with Games for Change at the moment. So um, yeah, maybe to go into this, I'm doing, I have a, pat a particular background. Um, I'm, uh, well, I'm a former filmmaker or in general, I'm a media maker, but I have a background in various forms of storytelling. This is how I came to games. And uh, well, I I started with theater as both as writer and, and, and director, and then went into into film. And really, from from the early moments of my film studies on, I was really interested in documentary film. So really bringing topics from the real world into films and making a dramaturgical arc around them and communicating these topics to audiences. And this is basically what from the first moment when I got back into contact with games, because I stopped playing games when I was 15, I was into theater and film and all this kind of stuff. And uh, then I came back, well, like, I don't know, 10 years later and discovered that there are, that games had grown up and there were really game topics that were connecting with me, both from the artistic perspective and from, from the themes they were promoting. And I joined the Cologne Game Lab. It's an institute in Cologne, which is uh, which is doing research, but is also providing education, both in a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. And I started working there, went into research, and then I met with Simon, and I met with Jean-Michel, who is uh, co-president of Games for Change with me. And yeah, we talked about what we can do. And then two years ago, we decided that we start the European chapter here in Europe. And we started out first with this access between Paris and, and Cologne, which is really convenient and makes it really easy for me to come here, which is nice. Only three hours on the train or so. So throughout the past two years, we have been launching a couple of activities around Games for Change. 
Of course, the most important thing is the Games for Change Festival, which takes place every June in Paris here. But there were also a lot of smaller activities like workshops that we did and, and, and we organize Games for Change tracks at other conferences and so on. So we try to bring the topic in a, in a broader perspective and not only stay within the Games for Change community, because this is what we think is a very important thing. Of course, building a community of people who are interested in this topic from the perspective of developers, but also from the perspective of educators and activists, but, but then spreading this to the public eye because, well, the opinion that I have, it's really important to make these special types of games, games that have a documentary approach or a learning approach more visible to the public. And one step towards this might be that we, that we should think of having a platform where you can find all these games and don't lose track of them because they are spread all over the internet. I'll wait a second. <laughs> Too many people for the game. We shouldn't complain. No. <laughs> Okay, that was actually a really nice interruption to have <laughs> such a lot of more people coming in. Um, well, I was just explaining um, what Games for Change in Europe does, and um, so one of our uh, one uh, one of the things that we are that we are working on is thinking about how can we make impact games more visible with a common platform, and and how can we make audiences really be interested in, 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 in social impact games and not having them just find one somewhere on the internet and then uh, yeah, lose their attention in some kind of way. So this is really important. And well, of course, uh, the part of community building like what we do tonight is important too. So we have, this is the launch of the Paris monthly meetup, hopefully monthly meetup. We have something like this in Cologne at the Game Lab as well. And we are reaching out to, to other chapters all over Europe to see if we have and can, can build little satellites and then connect all these satellites when we come together for the, for the annual festival and bring in all the inspiration from these little satellite events and discuss them on a European level. But um, yeah, I think that's it for the moment. I'm really looking forward to discussing the topics of of tonight and looking forward to your input in what we could do as a community and as Games for Change organization to support what you are working on at the moment. Let me know. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so Games for Change is a, a USA foundation organization based on how games, video games can be used in different ways, such as uh, bringing awareness on the topics. It can be a health topic. It can be uh, an environmental topics, political things. Uh, they have different kind of point of view gathered under this approach. And, uh, and it has been founded in 2004. So it's, uh, it's a foundation that have now more than 10 years. Uh, as uh, Catalina said, it's, uh, the Games for Change Europe is, uh, is younger than, than the US one. And, uh, and it's the, the most important moment of each of these chapters are the annual festival that happens in different places. So the, the one in USA happens in New York every 
uh, every once a year around April. Um, I can't remember when exactly, but it's around April. And uh, the festival in, in France, in Paris, uh, happen around June, and uh, it happens uh, two times right now. And so, so now, now we have uh, this introduction. I would like to come back in history a little bit and uh, talk about a movement that has been born in USA and Europe based on a very particular approach of games, not video games. So during the 70s, there is a, a movement called the New Games Movement, which is um, a kind of thinking of this era where a group of people thought about how games can shape people in the daily life. And the, the idea was, at school, most of the games or sports that is teached by a teacher to, to students is based on competition and confrontation. And for them, it was a very important moment when you are young and you play games that are only based on confrontation or competition. It can influence you in some way and have a certain vision of the society. So these people were thinking about how would it be possible to build, to create, and to play games that are no, not only based on competition and confrontation, but can be like uh, collaborative games, cooperative games, games that um, you will play all against the rules or all against a system. Uh, sometimes those games uh, can't be really uh, finished. It's an, uh, it's an idea that uh, we will play all together to reach a goal, to reach uh, something. And, uh, and they have been building and creating a lot of games that is meant to be played mostly outside or in big rooms. It can be played with two players or hundreds of players. And they have built a large movement that is still, uh, has still some influence today. Uh, in a lot of uh, you know games that you can play um, in the schoolyard, or maybe I don't have the word in in English, but you know when you do a, a colonie de vacances or a centre aéré, there is a lot of uh, I don't know, do you have the word summer camps, summer camps yes, stuff like that. Uh, there is a lot of games that have been born in this uh, movement uh, among these people. The two books uh, behind are books that has been edited in uh, in the 70s. And it's like a group of rules or different kind of games that was uh, played during this uh, this time. Uh, so they have really made a lot of different kind of uh, things, different kind of games that you have to play together. And uh, they try to avoid competition, but some of them are also based on competition. Uh, the idea is was more based on if you play a competitive game, how do you do that in a way that uh, you avoid you avoid to have like one winner and everybody else are a loser, for instance. Or how can we deal with that approach so uh, it doesn't have the same impact as it can as in competitive sport or stuff like that. Uh, one of the most famous games that has been born in the news game movement is the Ultimate. I don't know if you know that sport. It's a frisbee that you can play on the beach, for instance. It's like a, a big sport that you can play uh, at, at the summer and stuff like that. So uh, this movement is one of the, uh, like not ancient, but in, in the, during the 20th century, it's one of the most important that I can remember or I have found uh, that think about using game or create games uh, in a way it can have an impact on people or the society. So it was very, um, it was like a, a utopia. A lot of, um, of the community that has been made during the 70s has been dismantled after in the 80s for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but it's not, the, it's not the topic of tonight, so I won't go in further in detail. Back to, to video games, talking about uh, what can be a social impact game, what can be a meaningful games or whatever you, you will call it. Uh, one of the most famous uh, video games that has been uh, made uh, in that direction 
is uh, probably one of the most notorious examples, is the September 12th by uh, Gonzalo Frasca. So Gonzalo Frasca is a researcher in game studies, and he, he worked a lot on the idea that games can uh, provide a message, provide a meaning, uh, goals, or, or message through the mechanism of the games. And he made this short game that he said it's not really a game. It's like, it's not really a game, it's something else. You cannot win, you cannot lose. And it's like almost like a simulation games that have rules. And by experiencing the rules, you will understand, or you sh should understand something. Uh, how many of you already have played that game so far? Okay, not so much. Uh, so the game is, uh, is accessible online. I, I think I, maybe I will have to spoil you how it works, but it's quite quite simple. So you have you have a landscape like that. It's like a, a city in the Middle East, and you only have a, a, what's the name of that a reticule. Like you have to target people. You know, just like if you were in a, in a commander center or in a in a plane or something like that, and each time you you will click on your button, you will send a, a missile rocket uh, into that direction, and it will it might kill people or destroy destroy building. The thing is, uh, there is some some detail in the game that makes the the targeting quite awkward. When you click on it, it's not immediate. It will take maybe two or three seconds before sending the rocket. So, if you have targeted someone or something. Uh, it might have moved from the initial position and you might kill uh, other people. So the thing is, you will see, like, uh, in, let's say, innocent civilian people in the street, and you will have other people that have arms and have weapons in the end. So when you play a game, you say, you, you, you say maybe I could try to, to shoot at the, at the armed people. And the thing is, by doing that, there is a lot of probabilities that you killed civilian. And for each civilian, for each dead civilian, if another living civilian cross the, the corpse of the dead civilian, he will cry and take a weapon and uh, run in the street with a weapon. So it's like uh, if these people are terrorists, they will take the arms if you kill innocent people. Is that clear? It makes sense. So the idea is in the game, in the, the simulation, you have. Um, an approach that the more you shoot, the more you will bring dead people around, you will make collateral damage, and it will bring more, more terrorists or more people that want to, uh, to, fight, to fight you. And so it's, it has no, not really end. The system can come back at the initial state where there is some people, but you can never end the action or kill everybody. Uh, the idea behind that, that simulation is that uh, it's very simple. It's like the violence brings more violence. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's the, it's designed as a short short experience that you can play uh, easily, and it's by just playing it, you just understand that you cannot win. It's designed in a way that uh, it says this particular message. So it has been made in two thousand seven, if I if I am correct. And a year ago, there is a game designer that has attempted to create an experience again, a game uh, that would prove that video games can express a message and can be uh, like an artistic medium by expressing message through rules and mechanism. And this game is called The Marriage. Does some of you have already played that? It's a very abstract game. Okay, almost the same amount of people. So it's um, the the idea of Road Rumble was to create a game that is very abstract, that doesn't need sound, doesn't need uh, specific graphics, and is as minimal as possible. And he wanted to create an experience that will provide his vision of what the marriage is. And the thing is, the when you play the, that game you have a lot of things that 
will express or provide uh, some elements, some interaction between uh, between the elements. So you have like two square, a blue and a pink one, and you have a lot of circle around that have different color. And when the circle will touch another square, it will provoke something, something different according to the square. Uh, if you pop the circle, because if you pass the mouse on the circle, it will uh, make it disappear and it will have an impact on one of the two squares. So the thing is, you have assistants in front of you that will react precisely on some specific interaction. And those interactions are supposed to bring you something, a point. And, um, and when Rodenbell released this, uh, this project, he, he said that uh, it was a, an art piece and he wanted to, uh, to prove to prove to people that a game with a minimal uh, graphics, sound, and stuff like that uh, can still, by itself, as a system, as an interactive system, provide you uh, provide you meaning, meaningful uh, ID and message. And the thing is, most of the people who play the game at this time doesn't understand at all what was happening and what was the point and what he really wanted to bring as a message. So uh, Renumbel um, said that it was maybe very hard to go inside the message and he had to explain what the rules and what the interaction was in order to explain the links between the interaction and the, and the ID. So the thing is, I, I won't explain it right now, but it's his whole vision of the marriage. So for instance, if, uh, if the two squares touch each other, one of the pink one will grow. Uh, if you just focus on feeding the big, one of the big square, uh, you will not have enough space to uh, sustain the other one. So it's like in a marriage, if one of the two members of the couple uh, take all the space and take all the, I don't know, uh, the activity and stuff like that, the other one might fade away and maybe die or disappear. And it's all linked uh, from the abstract system to uh, real world meaning. So it's uh, an interesting thing to uh, to point. Another, another game designer, which is quite famous too, uh, in the indie scenes, it's uh, Jason Rower. Jason Rower made a game called Passage. Maybe some of you have already played it. If you can raise your hand just to see. Okay, I think one of the speakers came by and, and talked about that game. Uh, it's a short game, five minute game. Um, and uh, of course, Jason Rower made other game, games such as Gravitation. Does some of you, people know a lot Passage, but a little less gravitation. How many of you played gravitation? Okay, gravitation is in some way uh, a little bit more complex than passage, but also very uh, autobiographics. It's like the story of Jason Rohr, the way he sees uh, his own daily life. And, uh, and it's like, what does that mean to work at home, to raise and educate your own uh, children? Uh, what is it to have to go away to work and come back and uh, sustain the relation between professional work, uh, leisure, and family, let's say, duty? And it's, uh, it's, a, well, it's a game well, well crafted, so you might want to, to try it at home later. So Jason Rohrer is also very well known for having bring the idea of playing a game can give you something, can provide you a message. And uh, through passage and gravitation, he managed to, to prove that, let's say, better than Rodendel in terms of reception. People have understand that uh, far more easily than a game like The Marriage. And this kind of games wants to express something through the rules and through the mechanism uh, of the games. And through, through that approach, it's not necessarily the graphics or the sound that will provide you a message, but the, the interaction you will, you will have with the game. By experiencing the system, you will understand something. 
So that's one approach we have seen in that uh, social impact games uh, movement. Other kind of approach that we have seen is like taking a specific genre in video games and try to create something different with it. For instance, can we make a strategy game uh, where you have to use non-violence strategy to win the game? Uh, this game is a, an attempt, it's called A Force More Powerful, based on a book and on a documentary, I think, uh, of the same name. Uh, it's, it's basically how non-violent strategy and theory uh, can be used to you know, change the government or try to uh, change some laws and stuff like that. The, in, that uh, in that game, which is very complex, uh, you have a scenario where you have to, I don't know, let's say, try to restore democracy or try to um, try to change the life in a quarter of a certain cities. And for that, you have to gather different kind of people, different people from different social origin, uh, from different uh, kind of community. And it's, uh, it's really, really hard because in most of the managing or strategic game, you can use the same weapon as your uh, opponent, let's say in any kind of classical strategy game. If they use force, you can use force. In that game, you are not allowed to do that, but uh, the enemy, the AI, can, uh, can use force quite, quite quickly and, and easily. So let's say you just do a strike to, to I don't know, to have uh, one day off in a week, I think something totally stupid like that. Um, you might have, as a reply from the government, to be shot in the streets. And all your effort to bring the community up uh, will fade away and fall. So you really have to think about uh, how you will build your nonviolent strategy so you will have the most impact on your objective. So this is, a, this is an approach. Uh, another approach that is well, uh, well known by the name, it's <coughs> games made by La Molle Industria. So La Molle Industria, I, I think a lot of you already know uh, the game he has made so far. Uh, one of the most famous was the McDonald video games, which was, <coughs> when it has been released, people thought it was like an official game made by McDonald's, uh, but it, of course it wasn't. And <coughs> like every year, he released two or three games on a specific topic. It can be news related, or it can be uh, on a more broader topic, like a, a history topic about the uh, oil rush, for instance. And um, the, the approach he has is to take like a hot news, a hot topic, and try to, let's say, gamify or let's try to create a game with uh, this thematic. So most of the time, the, the rules of the games or what you do in the games is not directly what will provide you a message or an idea uh, on the topic. But it's more about the thematic around the game, like the graphics, the sound, and the, the storyline will uh, provide you a message that he wants to, to provide. And uh, it's, uh, it's most of the time the kind of game he will take is really not linked to the message. For instance, uh, this kind of games that he released on the App Store a few years ago was a short sequence interactive sequence showing the player how a, a smartphone is built from the beginning to the end to the recycling cycle and um, and uh, of course it was targeting uh, Apple so it has been removed from the App Store like 48 hours after it has been released uh, of course it's available on Android and, uh, and that, that's an example but he also did uh, different kind of uh, of game. I, how many of you already played a game from Molly Industria? Just to see. Okay. So his approach is to drag a topic and make a game around it. The game mechanism or the rules are not directly linked to the to the thematic. Uh, 
uh, but it's more two parallel things. We also see a lot of um, a lot of amateur creation nowadays that will use game in order to provide uh, a message or to express uh, something. This game might be maybe relevant uh, this year with all the topics related to uh, harassment in video games and in the player community, but it has been made four years ago. It was like a short FPS experience, it has been made by one person. It's really short, it's not really ended. Uh, it was like a game where you just walk in the street and uh, sometime you will be harassed by people in the street and uh, you can just shot at them. Just bring that. So it's super violent. Uh, it's more a kind of humor in terms of uh, more than a rant, you know, where you want to express something deeply, uh, which is uh, which is hard to tell, and uh, the creator wanted to do it as a kind of game in order to touch more people from that from that um, area. Uh, she wanted a gamer and player to play that and be shocked by uh, by this approach. Uh, so of course, it's a very engaged game and and kind of direct approach, but the idea behind that is like some people uh, want to use games or game engine in order to express something. And sometimes it's a very short experience, sometimes it's games, it really depends on the, uh, on the content. But <clears throat> this example is one of the first of a movement that appear from 2010 to now, where amateur just take some game engine and stuff in order to uh, express a message. We've also seen kind of, let's say, alternate related game experience that have been made in the past five or six years. Most of the time it's like, it's um, a big company who wants to um, create something, an experience around how we can change the world. Uh, I have Tech Evoke, which is one of the last big ones that has been made so far. Uh, the, the concept of Evoke was to ask people to subscribe in the game and to subscribe as a kind of agent. And as an agent of the group Evoke, you will be contacted to solve a problem, to solve a mission. But every mission was related to a real world problem. For instance, you could have the first mission was something like, uh, can we, how can we manage to bring water in some town in Africa where water was very rare and hard to find? <clears throat> how can we use efficiency or like collective intelligence to uh, reply to this need? And uh, the idea behind that game was to create a kind of role play framework on real world problem and make it a game. So anybody could join the platform and bring their own ideas, their own solutions. So maybe you are, I don't know, a game developer and your part time is to be a gardener because you really enjoy gardening. And maybe you have some, some idea on how, I don't know, drag water from a place to another one. Maybe you are an engineering <clears throat> in that topic and you might provide bigger, uh, feedback about that. Or maybe you are just, I don't know, uh, any kind of, uh, the, the idea was, it's not important if you are not a specialist in, in a domain, but it is more, maybe you can bring something, an idea and make the difference by thinking and debating with other people under the framework of this role playing game. So it's uh, really another approach to that. Uh, one one and the last example uh, I know is using the social network indirectly in order to raise awareness on a topic. You know, it's not bringing a solution, but just raising awareness. For instance, so Power Planet, it's a game that is not available anymore on Facebook. It was a game uh, made for uh, Discovery Channel. 
<clears throat> and it was linked to a series of documentary uh, that has been uh, uh, broadcast on that channel. And um, so the concept of the game is uh, quite simple. When you start the game, you have a planet that is uh, totally empty. There is uh, resources in the earth, on the sea, in the air. Uh, you, you have like nothing built on that. And you will be invited to construct thing and make some research. Like you have some three research things that you can develop. It's very similar to other game, like, I don't know, maybe, you know, civilization or stuff like that. Uh, when you knew, when you learn a new technology, knowledge or thing, you can unlock others. And the thing is, you have different way to gain resources. You can gain money in order to build more and make more research, or you can earn point and uh, and make scores. So after after the you have played on your planet for forty eight hours, you just just lost you just lose your control on that planet. Meaning that uh, everything you have done, you cannot control it anymore. And your planet is shuffled among all the other ones controlled by the player before. And every planet are uh, distributed one more time to everybody. So the thing is, you will get another planet from another player that has been playing 48 hours before you. And everything happened on five cycles. Meaning that a planet will have five times 48 hours. So five players, five players will play consecutively 48 hours. And, um, and the thing is, maybe you will catch a planet where a player has, let's say, drain all the resources, uh, catch everything that he could in order to make a lot of points, a lot of money, things like that. And you will spend your next 48 hours to I don't know, let the planet die, or maybe try to resolve the problem, restore things, in order to bring to the other generation of player the opportunity to build new things, etc. At the end of the five of the fifth cycles, you have a collective scores and a kind of uh, summarize, summary of every player's activity. So you don't play with friends directly, you play with other people who is playing the game on Facebook. And the thing is, if you, all the five players try to play, let's say, the sustainability strategy approach by we take some resource, but we try to let some for the other players, well, you can make a big score at the end. But if somebody at a certain point try to make an individual high score, it might, uh, it might give some flow uh, to, the to, the, to the planet. And it will be probably hard to, to bring the score. So the concept of the game behind is if we play together, we can make a higher score, we can like live together better, but uh, it's hard because it's rely on unknown people and you don't know, can you trust somebody that you have never known or it's a lot of mini questions like that in the game. It's just uh, going from uh, cycle to cycle a uh, few times. So, so that's it. My another uh, example of what kind of game uh, has been made in that uh, in that approach. Of course, there is also a different kind of uh, of way to bring awareness and uh, Moli Industria. We can we can say that Moli Industria have an approach that will bring awareness, uh, but it's uh, another strategy to to reach that goal. Uh, is everything clear so far? with these examples or no question at this point okay so now uh, we like to talk about the idea behind the, the, the meetups or the gatherings that we want to uh, push in different places in, in Europe uh, starting by this one uh, tonight uh, the idea of this meeting should be something like monthly or be monthly where we could just uh, come and, uh, and talk about a topic. The idea is to, the idea is to, to bring game developers and people active 
in activism topics. It can be political, it can be environmental, uh, it can be any kind of, uh, of topic. And the idea is to gathering this kind of audience and try to uh, brainstorm, discuss, and share about different kind of experience. Uh, maybe there is another way to think uh, how game can be created or used to to provide a message or to provide a, uh, a meaningful impact or put people more active on the topic. It's up to it's up to us to to decide that. Uh, but the the idea is to really bring people. It can be somebody that we invite. Maybe it will be I don't know. Uh, it can be a, a urban activist, for instance, that will uh, show his or her works. Um, like it can be I don't know graffiti art, for instance. Graffiti art is not directly related to games, of course. But maybe in the process, in the concept, there is something that can. Uh, make us think about how we can think on create games or do things like that. And, uh, and that's the idea to bring different kind of discipline or field and see if it can inspire uh, people, the community, to, uh, to build a game like that. So some example that I have gathered like that would can be some trail to think of. Uh, it can be, so I have talked about uh, New Games Movement, which is uh, not directly digital games, uh, but there is some uh, artist who has used uh, non-digital games to provide a meaning or to provide an experience that is supposed to uh, create, uh, to create a, an ex a meaningful experience. Uh, one that I like to, to show often is the, a concept made by Samara Smith, which is called Chain Reaction, which is basically uh, like a racing game in a city. It can be made in different kind of big city. It can be New York, it can be Paris, it can be uh, London, any kind of big, big city. And the, the idea is you have to start from point A and reach point B and be like the first to reach. Uh, the thing is you have, according to the, the, the session, you will have a list of prohibiting objects and a list of, uh, let's say, uh, freedom objects. So prohibiting object is like, if you reach certain object, you will have, uh, I don't know, like 10 seconds of you don't move or you will have to follow that object until it disappears from your view or something like that. Uh, and, and the other way, the, let's say the other object that will provide you more freedom is like, if you see that kind of situation, you might be able to run for 10 seconds, for instance. Or uh, you can free yourself for an object that has uh, captured you. For instance, so this is the basic rules. And According to the city and the place, the rule will change. For instance, um, in New York, it will be each time you see somebody with a Starbucks cup, you know, the brand Starbucks, you will have to follow them. Uh, every time you see um, an independent bookstore, you are allowed to be free from a captivating object, uh, or you can run for 10 seconds. So, this approach, for instance, will emphasize uh, the big presence of some brand in big city and will also uh, provide your interest or your attention to other detail. Like if you see a plant just growing up between two sidewalks, it can provide you 10 seconds of run. So, of course, you can do the other way. Uh, you can do, I don't know, this object will. Uh, will be the like let's say the bad one or the good one to for for you, but uh, by by experiencing this kind of racing uh, racing situation, you will realize that wow, how many Starbucks cup did I see in less than ten minutes? I can't even play the game. I, I'm like at the other way of the city right now because I have been. Uh, captivating by a lot of uh, this brand. Uh, so if you 
if you want to take care, for instance, with that rule, you will try to avoid the big avenue because you know you will find so much uh, ground or stuff like that. And uh, you will try to uh, change your way and find small streets where you might find surprising items and stuff like that. So that experience has been made by this artist in order to uh, pay more attention to the daily environment where we live, where we work, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and by by playing that, uh, it will help you to to realize uh, that. That's as simple as that. Um, in term of in term of um, I've mentioned, for instance, urban hacking. Uh, <clears throat> there is. Uh, there is a lot of things in terms of urban intervention nowadays, from graffiti to spontaneous culture. If some of you know some artists like Brad Donnay, uh, um, there, is a, there is a lot of people that made things in the street. And among that, uh, that practice, that artistic practice, there is a lot of attempt to uh, change also the daily routine or change the way you will view at an object, at a landscape by changing it, changing sometimes a little detail can make the difference. It's uh, also, of course, very inspiring by uh, the situationist movement. Uh, and, uh, and all that, uh, that approach might be interesting to, to see and to talk because uh, it's provide another way on having a view or a point of view on some things that we think we know well, and uh, and well, it's uh, it's discovering new things every day. So it might be a, an interesting approach. Uh, the idea of workshop is something we have talked a lot with uh, Katarina in the past years. Um, it can be. An experiment. It can be. Uh, it can be anything that is more into a practice, practice, uh, practi practical approach. Like we just gather on a topic and we just do something, and we work uh, all together on a, on a topic. And it's less like a talk situation. It's more a workshop. It really depends on the on the talk with uh, with Katarina. We we've managed to, to do uh, successful things in New York uh, in April that maybe we could iterate here with, with you. Uh, we, it could also be uh, taking a book and try to have a critical review of that. So maybe there is a, a book on that topic that has been released. Uh, one of you will have read it and want to share it and talk about it. And, uh, and maybe Maybe it's uh, it's the best opportunity to uh, take a session on that and uh, like read a review, talk about that, and maybe it will lead us on another topic. So there is a few books uh, on that topic that might interest us, and uh, it it might be a topic of a, of a session. Of course, um, the I. I've mentioned books, but it can also be documentaries. Documentaries are most of the time really interesting in the way the way they are constructed, the way they are built, uh, provide a certain point of view on a topic. The documentary is never neutral, uh, but the way it will bring the topic, uh, show some face and avoid other face, uh, try to provide a message and stuff like that, uh, might uh, might really. Uh, bring things to think about and 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 discuss. Uh, well, that's mostly mostly all. Uh, the the other the last part is to maybe have a guest of somebody uh, who has something to present or to talk and debate about a topic or stuff like that. I don't have any image for that. I'm sorry. Uh, well, that's mostly that. It's almost one hour. It's eight o'clock in a few seconds. Uh, I think we can stop the talk now and maybe talk, I don't know, drink or I don't know what's the, the plan for the food. But uh, yeah, that's it. Okay.
to shut it off then? Or we'll just we'll just walk back around, or do you want to? As you as you feel, I don't know. 